Hello, YouTube. Baseball Card Junkies TV here. Finally, we're running a little bit late today, but uh, <laughs> we're here to hang out with everybody. Um, so we kind of have an open, um, I guess, plan as far as this video goes. Uh, we're going to show some pickups. Uh, we're going to talk baseball and baseball cards and maybe open up the floor for questions throughout. Um, so obviously feel free to ask away and um, we will get to them. Uh, so I guess uh, without for further ado, let's get started. Titanic Taters. <laughs> Oakland A's 915. And top city five four zero one and Eric because you got the computer with this uh, uh you you got to keep us abreast with all the comments we can't see the comments only Eric can so yeah <laughs> I am like, I have be, all the power <laughs> yeah he's got all the power he's got like a, <laughs> so I'll make a really quick announcement so I can hold myself to it um, next Monday which will would be the sixth. Of July. Yes, July 6th. Uh, we are going to do the contest announcement from the uh, all winner MLB teams. We're going to do the results. I uh, probably won't pick a winner at that time, but we will name who the winners will be picked from. Um, and then we'll do like a quick live video throughout the week or something um, at some point, just doing the randomizer or whatnot, whatever. Sound good? Sounds good to me. All right. Yeah, man. It'll be interesting to see how how the results shake up on that contest. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was fun. Um, For sure. Yeah. So, uh, who has mail that's already opened? I do. I have a couple, <laughs> that, and then I have some that are not opened. Oh yeah, man! Yeah, I want to. I, I gotta see. I gotta see the reaction when you open your mail that you have not opened yet all right i know right because eric <laughs> he's, he's got some serious cards to show we already well, know I'll, I'll yeah. show a couple that are open first so this is the 1997 finest gold oh. embossed which you know of because it's embossed and has that nice little decal edge on it that one's nice and now we know what's next on your list <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. got the gold refractor. Uh, this is the 1998 no, no. Bowman Chrome uh, Golden Anniversary. Oh, man, you both picked those up recently, right? <laughs> mine's, mine's, mine's 11 out of 50. What's yours? Um, 46 out of 50. Oh, see, mine was a earlier print run. <laughs> eBay one of one. I'm just kidding. Man, <laughs> the crazy thing about that card, I don't ever remember seeing a bonds available. And if one yeah, has ever crazy. popped up, I, if ever one has ever popped up, I probably didn't take the time to look at the auction to see if it was a golden anniversary because you could barely tell the difference between the regular and the golden anniversary on those. The, uh, the only difference is going to be the the font, their signature. Yep, the, the facsimile signature is in gold instead of black. That's the only difference, yeah. So yep. I wonder how many of those I passed up without realizing it. Probably at least one. Yeah, man, maybe, maybe <laughs> not. I don't know. It so, wasn't okay, a, also a, it's not a refractor. It's obviously so it numbered out of 50 on the back, so. I can't remember if I've shown these on my, my channel, my Top 85 401 channel. But if I haven't, I have been enjoying picking up some of these tobacco minis. Mm -hmm. And this one is the Tol I, 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 Tolsty back. I guess that's how it's pronounced. And this is okay. the red ink Tolsty back. Tolstoy. These cards are a lot of fun, man. That, those are from the early 2000s, aren't they? Like 2000s. Yeah, these are from the early 2000s. But, you know, I was watching... Uh, some YouTube videos, and it looks like Tops is making the 206 cards again this year. Yeah. And so I wonder if these cards are going to get popular again, the ones from the early 2000s. This one, I believe, is 2002. And then they also made the uh, the 205, Tops 205, which take after the T205 cards. And these those are the ones 
famously known for having the gold borders. And these are the sovereign backs. And I got it both on the oh, cap, yeah. the cap and the helmet variation. The sovereign back on both. So the uh, really Did you easy to the find. Same seller? Uh, these two I got from the same seller. Oh no, all three of them I got from the same seller. Yeah, I nice. got them all at once. So th this is a fun pickup for me. And you want to see my cool pickup? <laughs> yeah, man. Let's see a cool pickup. It's, man. it's not like uh, it's not super exciting, but um, I, I'll show some better, some bigger cards later. But I hadn't seen this before. It's a game card from 1989. So generally, wow. when well, I let me see the I back of those. Yeah. So you got this one, Eric? Cool. Yes. Nice. Fantastic. So, cards. I like. I don't. That. I don't know what the heck uh, game it is, but I don't know. I didn't have it. Hadn't seen it before. So. So I bought it. That's a good open <laughs> it was, day pickup. And, and it was very cheap. Here's my like, oh, yeah. cards that you or the, that you've uh, pointed out to me. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, Yes, I love yes. those. Is that the 91 7 11 coins? Yep. You know where those yes. came from? I think they came from the bottom of the cup when you yep. get the Slurpee, the bottom of the Slurpee cup. That's exactly it. And then that, that Maguire right there that he's just showing, that was only available in Northern California. So Yeah, that like I, I know every player has different regions, and every region had like different colored discs, and not every player is available in every region. So th those yeah, are I have, really, um, really interesting. From the same so, year, I have two different Ricky Hendersons from two different yeah, places. Yeah, actually, actually, since we're showing stuff off, I got this binder where I have my discs. And I can't remember. I had to look in the um, the standard catalog of baseball cards. They'll tell you all kinds of information about the 7-Eleven discs and what which ones were from what region. But when I got, I got all three of mine in a lot together. I bought them all at the same time. But you could see there are different colors. You got the green oh, disc, yeah. the purple, and then kind of like the maroon color. Yeah. And then here's the back of them. But these cards are so cool, man. Love those yeah. food issue cards. For some reason, Maguire, the one that Eric showed, that's the only one I know of. Yeah, I think Maguire was only available in one region and that was northern california if you want to get the standard catalog of baseball cards it'll tell you every disc and which ones were available in what region and regionally they were different color discs if they were available in more than one region so those are those are really fun to collect yeah oh totally I love so them. i got this one this one isn't even going to be like the rarest card that i show in this so that kind of like gives you an idea of like What's um, Look at Eric showing off. I think I can only go big screen on this one. All Ooh. right. Oh yeah, I forgot oh, about that. Oh yeah. Oh, I know which one that one is. That's the. Yeah. Well, I'll let you show the back, dude. That's a 1996 circa Thunder Rave. That's beautiful, man. Great card. Those cards yep. are tough. Yeah, heck yeah. I realized until recently that when the first year of Circa Thunder came out, it was considered a premium product. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I didn't realize that, I wasn't really in the hobby in 96, but like in 98, I remember the Circa, the Circa Thunder. And that was like a super cheap kit, you know, aimed at kids product. So it went from like a premium product mm -hmm. to an aimed at kids product in the course of two years. Yeah, it kind of it failed. Yeah. yeah, I think they even like um, started selling them. Like retail dropped on them, like yep. what the retail yep. price was. So yeah, so I think that's why those raves are so hard to find because you know anything that wasn't in a premium product, those lower numbered inserts, they they get lost and they get thrown out and they disappear. The population is not and reflect what the serial numbering is at all. And a lot of times in those low, low, the lower end product, they make a ton of it. Yeah. So, so. let's see. We got another live mail day from Taters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, I couldn't like wait. I had to open my second mail. ago. I'm saving. I'm going to show it last. I actually got a card in the mail today that I wasn't 
planning on even showing on YouTube at all, but since we're, and I already opened it, but I'll show you guys, because you guys are going to laugh when you see this card, but I'll show this it. Guy really <laughs> did this number on the tape. Oh, man. Yeah, lately I've noticed that there have been a lot of packages coming in from eBay that are not packaged well. And Dude. I think it's because there's a lot of people selling cards. All that aren't, aren't, worst. Yeah, worst packaging. And obviously it's because the hobby is so exploding and the values are going up. You're seeing a lot of people selling off cards that normally wouldn't sell cards so because I they're actually getting money here. for them. And then, now it's creating nine, poor shipping practices. 1997 Pinnacle Inside 40-something. Oh, yeah, oh. I just picked the bonds up of that not too long ago. Those are cool cards. Dude, that's a nice one. I don't have that. That's sick. Yeah, that There's is a bunch cool of them card. on eBay, eBay right now. Super cheap. <laughs> yeah, good yeah. to know. So I'm not sure which one of these I want to show first. Well, here, while you're going through that, I'm just going to – you guys can laugh. Everybody can laugh. So this card came in the mail today. Oh, yeah. And this is a 1993 Stadium Club Dome. And for you Derek Jeter collectors, you're, you'll probably be familiar with this card because this came out of that box set that the Jeter rookie card is in. And I was on eBay kind of looking around, and I was like, holy crap, I don't recognize that card. And sure enough, when I went through my collection, I didn't have it. So it's a dollar card that I didn't have. It happens, guys. With my, what, 5,250 or so unique Bonds cards, from time to time, a card will show up that I don't have. And the back really sealed the deal for me noticing that I didn't have it in my collection because I was like, I don't ever remember seeing a Stadium Club card from this era, the early 90s, that has that All-Star game That's cool looking. back on it. Yeah, it's a cool card. So... Uh, it's always yeah. fun to add a cheap card to the collection when you're a completist like me. I know some people aren't only chasing the super rare or high-end cards, but for a completist like me, a card like that is as exciting to pick up as uh, a tough-to-find insert sometimes. Abs for sure. That is right. absolutely true. So I'm showing this one first because the other one is shiny. Okay. <laughs> Last. Oh, yeah, that I love that shiny, card. shiny, but that card is awesome. Yeah. And I I think I've only seen one Barry Bonds ever. That's the... That is, it ain't in my collection. <laughs> well, the that, one that... That one that Eric's holding right there is only the second one I've ever seen of McGuire. I'm, I'm guessing the other one is in your collection. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I'm not guessing. Yeah. I know for a fact the other one's in your collection. <laughs> yeah, that's a, when that when that showed up, I was like, dude, you better you got to go big on this. I was like, you got to go big. I don't know if we'll see this again. Yeah, and then we that have maybe is this is probably like for a good my, this is probably my second favorite card of McGuire's from the nineties. I know what it is. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> oh yeah, dude, I yeah, love those that card. Beautiful. Yeah, because it's got the Man. it it has the same technology that they used on the Crusades, but and the prize both sides as well. Yeah, both sides. And he's in an A's uniform, so yeah. Th those have a print run of forty, and they don't sell like have a print run of forty. And I think a lot of it is because they're not numbered. I don't, yeah, I don't think yeah. a lot of people know that. That's what's so fantastic about collecting 90s rare inserts sometimes is if you know about the product, you can find some really, really, really rare cards. And if they're not numbered, they don't sell for very much. So actually, I got a, I got a pretty good deal on that card when I bought it. And um, so when I did the video, I talked about it being having, having a print run. That, to 40 the guy that i bought the card from watched that video <laughs> and he realized he sold it to me too cheap but uh, <laughs> that's funny he, did, he didn't know that but uh no i've i've bought a, i've bought enough cards off of him that i've, I've, I've made it up <laughs> <laughs> so 
Anyway, I want to share this card because I showed it on a video earlier today. Oh, yes. And Oakland A's 915. Okay, well, tell them what you were saying. You were saying comment. that somebody... So, yeah, so I was showing this card on a refractor reflection video that I did on my channel earlier today. And I was talking about this guy right here. Man, everything is a uh, mirror image. There we go. This guy right here. So Barry Bonds is at second base, and I was like, who is that at second? I've been wondering for years, but I've never really, you know, put any thought much into it except wondering who he is. I haven't done any research. Or... Is it Grudge Zilonic or whatever? That's Mark Grudge Zilonic, yes. Yeah. And I'll tell, you, I'll tell you exactly who that guy is. Um, he graduated from a high school that's about a mile away from me right now. Uh. Um yeah, so he played here in El Paso, Texas, um, got drafted out of high school, didn't sign, and then um, played a couple years of college ball. And he was um, he was an all-star in Montreal. He played for uh, Montreal, uh, Dodgers, and the Cubs. But the um, cool thing about oh, that's him. That's great. Yeah, the cool thing about him is I used to work out with him quite a bit. Because in El Paso, all of the uh, – remember I told you before that I had a buddy that pitched in the uh, Orioles organization? Yeah, yeah. He, he would take me along to some of these workouts, and all of the, all of the players that uh, played either in uh, minor league or major league uh, from El Paso, they would all work out together in the offseason. So my buddy would take me out to these workouts with him sometimes. And so it was – so oh, there's a wow. lot. He was like he was a local celebrity, you know. I mean, we watched the guy on TV, and there we were working out with him. He's taking ground right. ball, you know, batting practice. So it was it was really cool. Wow, was, Eric, was, had... um, at that time there was three three major leaguers, and but yeah, but like I said, Grudzelanik, he was he was an all star, won a Gold Glove one year too. Recognize the name. He 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 definitely had some uh, some good years. Now I had no idea about that. So do you remember when this card came out? Because the Topps Chrome Refractor obviously is the same image on the as the flagship Topps from this product. Yeah, um, I, I I honestly don't remember. Oh, I don't. Wait, oh boy, I, I did. Um, I kept quite a few of his cards, and it was him and another guy. I kept like it was. I was at that age where I wanted to get them signed, but at the same time I was kind of working out with them, so I didn't want to seem like I was like fanning out. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, that would be kind of so, awkward. Hey, man, good workout, by the way. Can you sign my baseball card? <laughs> it was like that. I was like, I thought I was kind of too cold to do it, but yeah, I, I wanted to, yet, but something was holding me back. Now, now yeah. I totally regret it. Now I would, yeah. I'd totally walk right up to him and ask him to sign it, but. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. Uh, that's a great story. Thanks for sharing that with me. I had no idea. Yeah, but, yeah when you said that in the <laughs> video, awesome. I, was like, I was like, oh, I know who that is, Nate. <laughs> oh, that's great, man. That's awesome. Yeah. So, yeah all right, so who's ready for the next then, too. What's Gerd, up? Gerd Zialonic was a big prospect when he came up with the Yeah, game. yeah, he was. Yeah. Mark Grezelonic. Yeah, he... I remember him. Yeah, I mean, I remember oh, okay. him being a good ball player, yeah. Yeah, he played for a long time, man. For a nice. I want to say he played close to twenty years. Yeah, that's a that's a solid career for sure. So, so here is one that um, you know those types of cards that when it comes up on eBay, you don't even try and bargain with them; you just buy it now. Damn. <laughs> so I uh, I couldn't pass this up. This is the oh, dude. ninety-nine Sports Illustrated Fabulous Forties. And wow. actually, I lied. I didn't buy it right away because I actually saw the um, the hand numbering, and I could not remember if these were hand numbered or if they were um, supposed to be foil stamped. <coughs> I really didn't want a a um, like a replacement card, so I was I was gonna pass on it if it was a replacement. But I looked it up, and because I'd only seen this card one time before, so. I looked it up and it said no, all of them were hand numbered. So I got on eBay and bought it, and you can see why I really wanted it because this card is killer looking. 
You know so, what that card reminds me of? It reminds me of Dufex and X Factor Technology combined. Yes. Yep. Man, that card. And we were is talking beautiful, about, dude. You and I were talking about it the other day. Remember, I was saying like I don't remember Fleer using this on uh on any other cards, but yeah, yeah, yeah that that, card, that that yeah that that shine is definitely something that they didn't recycle. Was Bonds in this set? No, not no. No, if, okay. If he, no, I've never seen a Bonds out of that man. Because um, the number because McGuire's actually he's got the highest print run in this set at seventy. Because whatever uh, their home run total was the year before, that was what the uh, the print run was. Yeah, yeah. So, so the year before, Bonds had 37 homers, I believe, in 1998. Oh, okay. 30, so he ah. wasn't. Okay. Yeah. That was 40s. I'm wondering if that was. So he didn't even hit 40 home about. runs. That's why he wasn't in that set. Oh. Gotcha. That's too bad. Is. So, Fabio, <laughs> so does the 40s represent like the number of home runs? Or I guess like 40s club. Like. I think so. Like the fabulous 40s, all the people that hit 40 home runs in 1998 probably were in that set, yeah, is what that, it sounds yeah. like. You all know right, what? So, did, uh, did Giambi hit? That's what I was just thinking. Well, that's what I was going to say. Is I think Giambi hit you're, 40 you're, in, was it 98 or 99? When he hit like 340. Uh, well, he won the MVP in 2001, right? Yeah, but I think it might have been 99 then. He hit like 40 something home runs and he batted like 340. Man, that was a monster did, year for Giambi. Did not get Man. the MVP. I think, um, I want to say Thomas got it. Yeah, well, he had that was that was a a big year for production. So yeah, you yeah. have to put up some big numbers back in the late nineties to win the MVP. That's for yeah. sure. So here's a I card. I was nineteen ninety eight. He hit twenty seven home runs. Okay, yeah, he didn't come close. Then. Yeah, yeah. I remember Giambi was like a twenty home run guy for a long time, and then all okay. of a sudden he had a he had that big year. Yeah. So, but so here's a cool card I, I figured I'd show off here. I got this in the mail. I haven't shown it on any of my YouTube videos, I, I don't think. But it's from Pacific, and it's the private stock. And um, it's like a paper. It's paper thin. And if you look oh, at the yeah. back, you could, you could almost, well, you can't quite see my finger through the paper. But it's like the thickness <laughs> of construction paper. It is embossed a little bit on the card. That's crazy. But the stock is like construction paper. And when I look look at the back of the card, you can actually see right through it. I don't know if it'll pick up on camera. I guess it will. Yeah, you can see the image on the other side because it's so thin. Like right in bit. here, you can see that oval. But great card here. And this one was from, I think, 98 or 99. Pacific Private Stock made this insert set in a couple of different years. And I picked the first one up for my collection about six months ago. And this is this card is a real sleeper. I found it on eBay for like three bucks plus fifty-five cents shipping. Of course, it came in a PWE, but because it's such thin stock, I mean, you can't even really bend the card <laughs> unless you fold it in half, like you know, like creasing a bill or something. But um, it's a tough card, man. And I I was looking in Beckett, and it, books are like twenty-five dollars, so. If you look hard enough or if you know your 90s cards well enough, you can find some good deals. Even though they're harder to find, you can find some good deals. And I was pretty fired up to add this one into the collection. Figured I'd share that one with everybody this evening. I dig it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if McGuire's in that set, but if he is, I'd be fun one to pick up. It doesn't look familiar to me, but I but I could be wrong. Yeah, you said ninety-eight or nine. I mean, McC I can't remember what year that. Well, here I got my magnifying glass. Those two years, McGuire's, he's got like two thousand cards. So yeah, no, this is two thousand one private. Two thousand one. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, cool card, man. Love it. I think he has like over 
three thousand cards in like nineteen ninety eight or something. It's, well, in ninety nine, they made so many commemorative cards of the seventy home runs that he hit ninety eight. That's why he has so many cards in ninety nine. Like this one that I just got in the mail today. <laughs> Dude, you got you got to tell us about that card. That thing looks pretty cool, though. Dude, I don't know it. I mean, it's uh, it was it's from Upper Deck, and I hadn't seen it before, so I bought it. <laughs> it I wonder very, if it's it was, a box topper or something. What brand is it? It's Upper Deck, so that's why oh, you just that, said Upper Deck. <laughs> that's all right, Nate. Yeah. <laughs> So as you can see right there, it's an upper deck card. So it's got like a, like kind of a ticket looking thing. And then it says like September 8th on it. And then, so it's him hitting 60 second home run. But I mean, I hadn't seen it before. I still don't know what the, it's similar to something else I just picked up recently. But, um, so I, I don't know what the heck. I can't find them on any checklist or anything. But well, you you know what's interesting about that card is it's commemorating home run number sixty two, and I'm yeah. also noticing that the holder it's in is recessed for a jumbo size card. Yes. So it I looks bet like... you I bet you a million bucks that card came from shop at home and Don West was selling those and upper deck <laughs> probably. No, I'm just telling you guys, I know how baseball cards were back in 98. And I bet you a million bucks Don West was selling those on the Shop at Home Network. And it was something that was done after McGuire hit home run number 62. Obviously, before he hit home run number 70. Because you don't see too many McGuire cards that specifically commemorate his 62nd home run. Everything is all about home run number 70. Right. So that that is yeah. a cool piece, and I bet you a million bucks it came from TV, like a I shop at that, home exclusive. Yeah, because this case, it's kind of like I can't open it up. I'd have to like crack it out of this casing, you know? Yeah. What I mean? so I think it, yeah, that case. Yeah, but, card. yeah, that case. That case makes me seem to think that it would be something that was sold on TV. And what's the yeah. numbering on the back of that? Oh, uh, it says five thousand uh, or something. Dude, I think it says sixteen thousand two hundred. <laughs> wow so it's that's got that wait, definitely was sold on tv that came from tv i'll put yeah i'm sure it. it did and it was funny that you were talking about you know commemorative stuff and i was like well well you know look at what i got and especially yeah. no, upper deck, cool, upper deck that's a great like, piece they seem like upper deck really cashed in on that <laughs> on the home run record because they put out quite the checklist of Mac in 98, 99. Yeah. Yeah. I bet you people spent like 1999 on that card back in 98 and they're all <laughs> sitting in like somebody's like underwear drawer or something, you know, that people yeah. forgot about them. <laughs> well, I figured since the, the, since the documentary came, somebody was like, Oh, I'm getting ready to cash in on my, on my investment. I bought a 98. They thought yeah, this was going to be a I got it for like a couple dollars. So. Uh, yeah, that's a great piece, man. I, I, that that is definitely worth a couple of bucks for sure. Well, I mean, yeah. I guess now he they could cash in on it, right? <laughs> I think they lost Probably. money. Like they're fucking <laughs> off of it now than they would six months ago. True, but <laughs> yeah. I, I think if they bought it in '98 and they're selling it now, they're not they're, they're not making a profit. However, I'm pretty sure they lost at money. Least sell it. Because <laughs> yeah. yeah. I bet you a year ago you probably put that thing on eBay and it, it may not sell. I don't know unless you know a super Only collector McGuire guy uh, ran across like it and, and didn't have it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, any other live mail days for you, Taters? That's it. Oh yeah. No. That's oh really? Yeah. Oh okay. There was something else I was expecting to. See. Oh no no you showed it. The MVP, the yeah. Star Factor. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, here I'll show I'll show another recent pickup I got. And oh, yeah. I know I, I think I showed it on my other channel. I think I'm not sure if I've shown this one off yet or not. But it's a 1990. Uh, is it 98 or 99? Now I want to look. 90. Oh, okay. This is 1999 Top Stadium Club autograph card of. Barry Bonds, and I love how they have the you know certified autograph stamp right here on the corner, and how Bonds he he was always known for signing on his uniform, because 
the uniform typically was bright white, and so that you could see the ink. This is a great yeah. card, and I haven't bought too many Barry Bonds autos. I was, um, and the reason why is like stuff like this used to you used to be able to pick this card up for around a hundred dollars, and that that's just not the case anymore. I paid the better part of hundred and fifty dollars once you pay tax and and delivery. I mean shipping for this card. And a year ago, I could have got it for under a hundred bucks. So his stuff is just going up. But that one, I really wanted to add to the collection. So it's 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 a Plain Days Auto from the late '90s, and it's before Bonds Auto got super 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 sloppy. He he was real sloppy for a few years there, from like 2001 through 2003. Mm, that's so a neat looking card there. Yeah. So Taters, any comments or anything? Uh, uh, there's a big debate going on about Aaron Judge right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yankees cards so, with Crazy Kev. Oh, okay. <laughs> right on. There's a debate going on about the start of it. Uh, I got one more card to show. Okay, let's that, see it. It's that real, that killer card I've been super happy about. That would be from oh, uh, yeah. 1999 Encore. And oh man, that card is beautiful. Dude, this card is like I'm so happy I got it. Like it is so sick. It um look at look at all the look at all the activity going on in the background on that card. Dude, man. it's awesome, right? I mean, even yeah. the the seller had had taken a good picture of it, and so I I saw the picture and I just I gotta have that. It's number to number to one twenty five. Nice. Yeah, just but, I mean between that and the way it looked, I and then the fact that I hadn't seen it before, I was like, I, I gotta get that. <laughs> nice, nice addition, yeah. man. I'm very happy I did because this card is uh it's just super cool looking. So Yeah, for sure. Nice. Thank you, Nate. <laughs> That's a good one. Pretty cool. <laughs> like, like like that other one kind of has like that dufex it's like a dufex kind of but also kind of like a like the the foil the top oh the sports illustrated card yeah, yeah. no that i'm surprised they didn't the encore kind of i see a lot of foil in it yeah yeah that's like a foily yeah that has a nice foil foily, like i don't know but it has this like electric look somehow you know i don't know how you think there's like etching in it at all, or I mean, it's yeah. kind of hard to tell. I wonder if whoever listed it, it on eBay put uh, did a scan because sometimes cards like that, when they scan, it really, really enhances the look of the card with the scan. I think with I think when you have like refractive type technology on the card, I think it's better to take a pic. I think photographs come out better. I think yeah. scans, you know, scans for cards like this, you know, are fine because it's going to take basically a perfect picture. But scans just they don't do cards like this justice. So, I think photography works better for these types of cards in my opinion. Yeah, I, su I suppose with a camera you could really capture a good image if you get the right angle with the right <laughs> light whereas a yeah. scan it's just it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, don't get, I've seen so some cool, the, the new, the new scanners, not, they look a lot better. So the debate but, is whether or not Judd yeah. or Stanton will have a better career. At, well, at, at I, the end I, of their careers. Well, I think Stanton will simply because he started at a younger age. They're both equally injury prone. So the, I think Stanton will accumulate more numbers simply because he started at a much, much – I think Stanton was like 20 or 21 his rookie season, and Aaron Judge, his rookie like season 25. was 25. Yeah. yeah and they, they both have the same body type, and just simply because Stanton started young at a younger age, he will accumulate more numbers. Injury-wise, they're, they're both going to be equally prone to injury because they're so big. Both those guys are huge. And yeah. body types I, like Stanton and Judge just they're they're not durable enough to have a twenty year career. Especially if you start at age twenty five, it's it's gonna 
McGuire. It's going to be harder to have a long career. I mean, Judge, I'm thinking, is probably a 13-year career, 14-year career. Um, I mean, would... He has had some fantastic seasons, but he's got to do a lot in a short period of time. Well, he's had one. I, I really – <laughs> I really hope he has a good career because he he's a he's a great guy. Like when you talk to him and you, you well not when you talk to him, but when they talk to him in interviews, I mean he just seems like a super cool guy. And then I've seen yeah, his like how he is California with his fans and kids. <laughs> yeah, is is he from California? Yeah, he's from the Sacramento area. I had no idea. Oh yeah, I'll tell you what, he sure handles playing in New York really well. Absolutely, like, yeah. He, yeah. He he takes to New York like uh, like moth to a flame. But, yeah, because um, not not everybody can it, play there. Yeah, just no, you're right. I mean, not everybody. You know, I've and, seen a lot of players fall apart in New York, like uh, like your boy, um, uh, that pitcher. No, I can't Sonny think. Sonny Gray. Sonny Gray. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> yeah. He fell apart before New that York. Poor guy. <laughs> that poor guy. True. Yeah. Yeah. I did right. see some stats about Sonny when he was in New York, and it was like whenever he pitched, he got like no run support. <laughs> yeah, that's so. like Matt Cain for the Giants. I mean, that poor guy, he had like a three or four year stint where he, if he gets one or two runs, he better, he better savor those runs or else he's not going to get a win. Jeez. I mean, that guy has so many one to nothing losses, it's ridiculous. But. Kane, that did that did used to strike a good amount of people out. Absolutely, yeah. He was always among the league leaders in strikeouts for a long time. Yeah, I saw him and Rich Harden go uh, K for K one game. It was it was pretty crazy. Yeah. I think they both ended up with like about a ten or eleven Ks apiece. So yeah, that was pretty cool. That was the same game. So, no, same series. I saw uh, Omar Vizquel um, steal home. Damn, that's wild, man! You don't that see was, people. Yeah, you can see it on highlight videos. Days. It was it was insane. I, that was the first. That was the only time I ever seen that in person. Nice. Seen, uh, somebody steal home. So. <laughs> so <laughs> any other me. stuff going on in the comments, Taters? Uh, no, not really. Okay. There's well, only a couple of active people in there right now. Okay, well, everybody chime in, uh, comment in the comments uh, if you got any questions or want want to start the, the conversation in a different direction or, you know, just like thoughts. I guess something I could bring up is what are your guys' thoughts on the 2020 season? And oh. I will start off by saying that I'm optimistic, but I – well – I don't know. Optimistic is the wrong word. I think I'm a little bit pessimistic on whether the season is even mm. going to happen. However, with that being said, I am very, very, very pleased that the players union and the owners were able to agree on a 60 game season, because if baseball is not able to play this year, at least they had an agreement and I know a lot of people might be watching this right now and be like, Nate, what are you talking about? The players and the owners agreed to play. But with what's going on with this pandemic, there is a real possibility that it may not – There's just it just may be impractical or impossible for these players to play. So I just uh, was wondering your guys' thoughts and see if anybody had any comments heard, as well on that. Well, yeah, I heard Charlie, Charlie Blackman tested positive. COVID-19. Yeah, mm-hmm. I know there's been others. I think a couple other Rock, Rockies players. Yeah, and there's yeah, a couple well, players. Um, I think most notable Garrett Cole. Garrett Cole tested positive. Cole, who's even debating like whether or not he's going to play? Oh, 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 oh! So I think what um, Eric, I think what Taters is saying is some of the players may opt out because they don't feel mm-hmm. that. The, because of the health risk, basically. Yeah. Mike Lee so. from the Arizona Diamondbacks opted out today. He was the first guy. Wow. So. Okay. Yeah. And he so was, it'll be interesting to see what I happens. I mean, he must that. seriously be terrified because what, from what I was reading, he's kind of, um, kind of fighting for like I think a spot in the rotation. So. Yeah. This week will be very good point, JT. Yeah, I think that's going to change. I think there's going to be a lot of players that 
potentially test positive, um, which could swing the direction of whether or not that season happens. Yeah, yeah. So I guess people that are watching, even though that there is an agreement in place between the players and the owners, don't be surprised if there's no season. And I'm not super stoked about that, but that's kind of the reality of the situation. Super t- all right, so, cards. Yeah, that's Bob. What's up, Bob? Good to see you in here, man. Um, so, anyways, he says, yeah, he thinks that um, a lot of players are going to mm. opt out. And I don't blame them because it's especially if you got, like, young kids, you know. So, I remember the Nats. Oh, wow, man. Zimmerman opted out as well. Yeah, so, um, did McGuire Sosa not change your opinion Who's on a, Well, you got – Two, actually three, really big McGuire fans here. So, <laughs> yeah, um, it had no effect on what. Uh, it didn't change my opinion at all. It was more of a reflection. Yeah, it's, going it's back in time, of, like a a puff piece from what I've seen of it. I haven't actually watched it yet. You need you need to go over to Nate's. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure they've been. I know what it is. is I lived through it, right? I was there. Like, so the, the, there's right. things that I need to be reminded of because I was living through it. Like, you know, you'd be yeah, watching was... these shows and it would be cutting every at bat to Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa. Like, yeah, right? I remember I'd be watching like ESPN baseball tonight and every time McGuire and Sosa were up, this is after mm-hmm. the All Star break. They were always like cutting in on their at bats and yep. every night on Sports Center. I remember back in the day on Sports Center where they did um, oh, what was it called where they showed all the home runs that all the players hit? Well, was on and they'd show up. Yeah, that yeah. was on Baseball Tonight. Um, yeah. Oh man, I can't remember what it was called, but they'd show all the home runs that all the players would hit. Yeah. That was it that, didn't have man, any that brings back so many great memories. Ninety eight was such a fantastic season. But as far as like. Well, first of all, I haven't watched the documentary yet. I know Eric is going to be like, dude, come on. I just don't even know where to find it. That's the problem now. I need to find the documentary so I can watch it. But um, I've always been a fan of McGuire and Sosa. The only thing the documentary would do for me is just refresh my memory on what I lived through. But I remember that 1998 season so vividly. I could probably write that documentary and I mean, I, I can probably talk about things that most people wouldn't remember like and recall it instantly. I mean, that, that was just such a wonderful, wonderful season, 1998. So, uh, but I do want to, I do want to watch the document. Yeah. That's number 62. I remember that ball was yes. a line drive over left field. And when McGuire hit that ball, I thought it was just going to be a single, but the ball didn't drop. It just it barely oh, it cleared so the left field. It was like right down the line, and I think it it, it didn't hard. even go into the crowd. I think a groundskeeper covered that baseball. Home run of the season. Yeah, yeah groundskeeper got it. Now, yeah, but groundskeeper. The funny thing is, is, like I can't remember where I was last week or last month, but I know exactly where I was September eighth, nineteen ninety eight. Like. <laughs> You know, I remember. You know what's funny about that home clearly. run? I remember when McGuire got to first base. Yeah, he, he <laughs> circled back to go back to first base yeah. because I can't. He he was like, "Oh, I didn't touch first. and he had to yeah, go back he was, to touch he, first. He, and he, he was, was like a little well, kid. Yeah, he was like a little kid shocked. on the playground, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so hey, that, that was that was awesome, man. Did they interview like any of the Maris family for the? Yeah, they did a little bit. Yeah, they, they talked yeah, a little the, bit. Yeah. Yeah, the Maris family was sitting down. You guys are not going to learn anything. You guys aren't going to learn anything from the documentary. But, um, but it's it's a nice to you know kind of refresh and they they did it well. And then the thing I liked is that they didn't um, they didn't make Mac and and Sosa out to be like villains. You know, they talked about the steroids at the very very end. They didn't talk about it a whole lot. So. That was one well, thing I was kind remember, of worried about. Yeah, if you remember in 98, they were asking McGuire during the press conferences, are you taking Andro? And he was like, well, it, yeah. I mean, well, it's a supplement that I get at GNC, and, it, it and was, it's, it's something I take. And then people are kind of giving him a hard time about it. 
And then mm-hmm. he stopped taking it during the 98 season. He said, well, you know, if, if it bothers you guys, I won't do it anymore. So it's just he had, of, what happened was he had it in his locker. It was like on top of his locker. And one of the reporters said that he saw it and like and wrote it down because he didn't know what the heck it was. He was kind of wondering, you know, so he did some research and then then it was like, oh, you know, this is banned in the NFL and it's banned over here. And but you could buy it at GNC. It was, you know. Yeah, that, no that was just such a weird situation, man. Yeah, it. Yeah. I find makes it, me, it makes me it makes me just dislike Bud Selig that much. Well, don't get me started on that, though. We won't go there. Yeah, let's not let's not go there. <laughs> Man, I've heard you. Uh, I've heard this one before. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Everybody, everybody that watches baseball cut junkies has heard it before. They don't I feel need like they know our opinions on it, right? Yeah, yeah. No. So, any other something. any other comments on there, Eric? Uh, <laughs> no, not yet. Don't think- I want to talk about, I want to address about yes. the 2020 season. Like, I, you know, granted it happens, but um, I am all for the rules. I, you know, I like, I don't mind that they're going to play, you know, regional. I understand why they're doing that. That's fine with me. I'm good with the universal DH. Actually, I'm, I hope they keep that. And well, we talked about that last week. But the one rule that I absolutely cannot stand, and it re- and I don't even know why they're even trying it this year, I, I, it really frustrates me, and it's the extra innings starting with a man on second. Oh, I wonder how that will affect an ERA of a pitcher, because I can't imagine now, that you would have you, that you would get charged right, with the earned run if you give up a single to start the I, inning. Well. Right? Two years ago, the Chihuahuas were in the playoffs, and they they imp- implemented that rule. Now, what really sucked was because the Chihu- they went into extra innings, so they were in the they were in the tenth, and I was like asking my brother, I'm like, what the what the heck is going on? My brother's the one that told me, that, oh, they're gonna start that rule, they're you know starting now. So there was a man on second. There was um, one hit in the inning. They got one single, run scored. And that was it. The Chihuahuas ended up losing. They didn't score in the in the bottom half of the tenth, and it, so it was on one hit. They lost, but basically, you know, had they wouldn't have been able. They wouldn't have advanced any runners. I mean, you know what I mean. Nobody would have been on in the first place. Yeah. So I yeah, think they're doing it. To, well, I don't think it wouldn't affect earned run average because that's not an earned run, right? It better not be. No, it is not an earned run at all. Yeah. But so Um, I think there's better ways if they want to save time. And one is that that what they started in AAA three or four years ago, which I actually don't mind at all, is um, they have a pitch clock. And so in between pitches – uh, you know, a pitcher only has so much time before he's got to go into his windup. Mm-hmm. And believe it or not, that actually does, um, you know, cut down on the time a game co- uh, takes. Like, I like it because you still get all nine, you still get all of your baseball, but it's, you know, it's a little bit shorter because you just don't have the downtime. So here's one from Triple Crown 24 on a scale of 1 to 10. I'm assuming he's talking to you and me. How <laughs> weak are you got you don't have to play the Tigers in the regular season? Um, no, that's a that's a bummer. Since the Tigers got rid of Justin Verlander, because Justin Verlander was like the bane <laughs> right. of the athletics existence. Uh, no, wait, the last couple the years the A's have beat up on the Tigers, so I'm not – would say the Tigers – I'm not going to leave it on. Tiger, which maybe what he's referring to. But <laughs> now, I don't know if you guys know this, but the number three overall pick for the Tigers from the 2019 MLB draft was a guy from Santa Rosa. That's where mm-hmm. Eric and I live. Yeah. And I was talking with my son the other day. We were out on a hike. We were talking about the number three overall pick. And we were also talking about the guy that got picked number one overall in 2020. But my friend, our, uh, Hunter, one of his best friends, 
used to hang out with these kids all the time when they were younger. And um, it was just interesting to hear his thoughts on it. So it's a guy named Andrew Vaughn was picked number number three overall. Uh, oh, no, that was the White Sox. It was the Tigers that got the kid from Petaluma. So, from um, ASU, right? Yeah, from ASU, yeah. But anyways, so we'll see how these young players from Sonoma County pan out. But, man, yeah, I, I think De- uh, Detroit, you know, I think Cabrera, I would think he would have a pretty good year playing a 60-game season if they're able to play this year. That would be – that like players like Cabrera – could really benefit and guys i got to share this with you i was yeah. on my um on this group called barry bonds now and someone um had an idea that wouldn't it be great if barry bonds played in 2020 you know imagine <laughs> him being a dh and and playing right. 60 games i mean he's in good enough shape that would be really I, interesting to see if he what he could do right on a roster so, i bet barry obviously he's not going to be the barry of of old, but I bet you he would out hit a lot of current major leaguers. I, well, it would be tough for him to you know, square up on a 98 to 102 mile per hour fastball, I would imagine. But I do <laughs> know that he could put a clinic at batting practice and out home run derby any of the current ball players in a batting practice setting. But that would be sweet <laughs> bonds. I mean, this is just kind of a little fantasy for me, right? We were all fantasizing it on the Facebook page, but that would be that would be a fantastic uh, a treat for me to see Bonds play, a, uh, be a member of like the Giants or whoever, in a sixty game season because he got the Universal DH and, I mean sixty games. I mean heck, he could do it. You know, I mean maybe I don't know. I think he could. The guy cycles fifty miles a day. I mean he's in good shape, so you never know. Jeez. Yeah, I, I'm I actually. It interested to see like is pitching going to be more of a factor because you know it's basically like the first half of a season, right? So yeah, and a lot different. You get lower pitching. lower inning. Yeah, I think pitching will pitch dominate because you're not going to have the dog days of summer. I mean, think about yeah. it. you're not. I mean, guys are going to be pitching a hundred innings or less. Yeah, you know, eighty innings, so they're going to be fresh all year. Yeah, it'll be, but but however, I think pitching would probably take longer for the pitchers to get the get to a to a hundred percent as far as their stuff, and I don't know yeah, that they would usually, have time to get there. But you'll they're probably see working lower out pitch though. Count, you'll usually see lower pitch counts at the beginning of the year, so yeah, I think that's what we're gonna see. I think we're gonna see guys going, you know, three four innings. Plus, they're gonna have. Um, what thirty man rosters for a while? So I don't know, man. I don't even know about I, that. I think they gotta carry an extra catcher. I haven't looked too much into it. I think they gotta have like an extra catcher, and I'm I'm assuming. I guess the other guys they're probably gonna stock up on some more pitchers. I don't know how. I don't know how teams are gonna what they're gonna like, do there. But like is the, is there gonna be like a strategy adjustment where I I think so. Oh yeah, dude, you have to. If they're only playing 60 games, right, and if the, and this is if the season happens, but if there's a 60 game season, you got to figure every game is worth three times more than what a regular baseball season game would be. Yeah. So you yeah, have yeah, to sure. play to win every day. You can't play for tomorrow. Like a lot of times, you'll see managers manage for tomorrow. Like they'll say, okay, this game. We're going to let it go. We got to save our bullpen. We got to strategize mm-hmm. for the rest of the series. I don't, I think if you have a manager that does that, that is probably going to hurt the team more than help because every game is worth literally three yeah. times, over three times, like 3.2 times what a regular season game would be worth, or 3.1 that's maybe. A, I don't know. Yeah. So that's a very good point. Very good point. Yeah. Man. Yeah. I, um, you talk about strategy and pitching. I saw, I read something uh, yesterday that the A's, if they um, if they lose, if they leave Lazardo off the roster for like the first month, they'll have more control over him. For you know, oh, oh uh, man, yeah, I, I don't even want to know how. So the- this is a this is like yeah, this is so they're gonna have you. 
contract, you know, but the A's, you know, in a shortened season like that could really need, you know, really use his arm as in, in the starting rotation. So that's going to be a, what, what are the A's going to play for? You know, are they going to, are they going to try and win or are they going to think about next, next season? Year? I, yeah, I, I would and, think in a season like this, like, what is it? There's going to be a postseason, right? It's going to be abbreviated postseason. From what I yes. understand, it's not going to be an abbreviated postseason. It's, it's going to be a full on postseason. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 No, no, it's not going to be shortened. Would this season devalue, like, if you're the World Series winning team? Well, I think that we could reflect on it 20 years from now and answer that. But that's a fantastic question. And there's no way that. I could see it going both ways. I could see that it would devalue any kind of championship run, or it would maybe I could even see it being a more valuable championship run because you have just think of all the adjustments you have to make to be successful. And you, if there is a manager or a team that can figure it out before anybody else and they get the edge because they figure out how to win a championship with a 60 game season and a full playoff schedule, then, then you might be thought of quite opposite as, uh, uh, you know, so like, you know, winning the championship. So like, look at it this way. So let's look like a Cy Young award winner, right? They're going to yeah. be a 10 game winner this year. Well, yeah, of it, course. You're, you're not going to have know that you know can have twenty game winner. That's not going to happen. A five I could see a Cy Young winner being eight, be eight and games. two. Yeah, I could see a, a Cy Young winner being eight and two, man, with yeah, sixty sure. game yeah. season. So because I guess where I'm going with this is you have a, let, let's take a guy like Clayton Kershaw, who's been cursed with fatigue the last several mm. seasons at the end of the season. going to benefit somebody like that. He's going to benefit sure. greatly. So when we're sure. looking at him in 10 years after he's retired and we're like, I mean, he's a Hall of Famer. Like, without doubt, he's a Hall of Famer at this point. In his right. But does he say the Dodgers win the World Series this year? Does that de- – does, does only having a – Well, I mean, obviously it benefits somebody like Kershaw, but everybody's playing under the same – in the same situation. So – yeah. You yeah, know, who can adapt but, who can adapt the best? I don't think you can take anything away from who's gonna win the World Series. But Eric, I, I kinda wanna like like you're saying the the Cy Young winner is gonna be a ten game winner. Well, I don't I think so, like, man. I think I think a Cy Young winner would be like a seven game I don't winner. Think I'll it'll tell be you eight. why. Because you're gonna get like a Like if you're starting every fifth game in a sixty game season, that's only twelve starts. Yeah, that's, that's 12, 12 starts. So I could see a Cy Young winner being a six or a seven game winner. That yeah. would be just yeah. ca- kind of weird. You look at the back of a baseball card, right? And you're like, what, six wins and this guy wins a Cy Young? <laughs> yeah, but everybody's got to everybody's gonna know the year and what happened. Oh, true, true. But <laughs> still, I've just, you I just, know. I think I've I been think hearing some here, talk about. About I think is somebody going to hit 400? We're going to play a lot bigger role in, than, than win totals. Like you're yeah, gonna, well, you may see yeah. like a .50 whip or something like that or a .40 whip from a guy like Verlander or Scherzer, and that's going to be the determination of, you know. You, the you're also going to – you might see somebody hit 400. But that true. that's a great, great, great point, but – <laughs> but, but it is not going to mean the same thing as hitting 400 in a, don't get in a regular season. Don't get an asterisk. No, not at all. <laughs> it won't I mean, get it, an it asterisk. Can. It's just that, I mean, you'll be a 400 hitter for that season, but people but, aren't going to, it's not like a. Um, they're not going to be like, oh, you're just, you're in the same class as Ted Williams. Not going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. You can't. Yeah. Do I mean, for years I've been saying there's no way anybody's ever going to get hit 400. But if someone were to hit 400, this would be the year. Absolutely, that'd be <laughs> yeah. that would be actually pretty fantastic if that were to happen. That'd be pretty cool, man. I'm wondering 60 games. But you know what? I, I don't see anybody hitting 400 20? even with 60 games. And I'll tell you why. It's because there, there's too many specialty pitchers and too many guys that throw 100 miles an hour. There's too many shifts and there's too many 
home run or strike or, or you know like home run or strikeout at bats in the big leagues. You know what I mean? To hit four hundred, they're like yeah, players dude. like Bryce Harper, right? Like normally Bryce Harper would be a three hundred hitter, but because he everybody has figured out exactly where to play Harper on the shift. He's a he's a two forty hitter. Yeah. You know, you go back thirty years ago and you got the same Bryce Harper hitting the ball the same place and he's a three hundred plus hitter. So I just oh. don't see anybody hitting four hundred because of the shift, because all the I different that. pitchers that the batters have to face and because of the velocity and the uh the strikeout or home run kind of um outcome that you're seeing a lot of the strategists go with with Major League Baseball. Now I could be wrong, but um what did, yeah, it's just going to be tough. I mean, last year there weren't too many guys that even hit 300 or higher. What what did so, Be- Bellinger kind of what did he hit about 360 ish? Well, not last year. Or no, no. oh, you, Cody Bellinger. I was thinking of yeah. Adrian Beltre for some reason. I don't remember what Bellinger ended I, up. I think being, he, but I don't. I, I think he was three. He was up there. Yeah, I, I could be wrong. What his batting average was. But. I mean, I think there's a the distinct chance that you could have a 400 hitter this year. I yeah, I think so. Like, especially it's just you know what we don't have the um, Wade Boggs or Tony Gwynn types anymore. That's what I was just about to say, or George Brett, any of those like high batting average guys. Just, and, and you know, yeah, that you know, well, if we talk about all three of those guys that we just we just named. None of those guys were dead pole hitters. <laughs> yeah, all those. Guys and I mean, I, I could see, Al, I could see Altuve maybe hitting four hundred, someone no. like that. You know, a high batting average guy. That guy, no, nah, he's not going to hit three this year. Yeah, well, I mean, without the trash can, you know, I mean, I, who knows how <laughs> uh-huh. much we're doing? What Bellinger was what? hitting four oh eight after forty eight games. There we go. Thank you, right, Garp so, Funkel. <laughs> that's that's well, so. That's pretty close to 60 games, so you could, you know, if, if hitters are going for the 400, they might cut back on their swing and, and readjust so that they, you know, get more base hits compared to home runs, too. So you could see someone go for the 400. Yeah, they would, have, they would have to change the way they're they're hitting. That's, that's Their sure. approach would have yeah be much different, yeah. That dead pole hitting from the left side? That, that dude is to not the trying to get any contact. He's like swinging for the fences every time, Bellinger. Who's that? Cody Cody Bellinger. Like oh that, yeah, he's a he's a power not hitter. To take the ball the other way. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He hit that high. You know, I honestly didn't get to watch him play a whole lot because I'm I watch the American League more. Yelich. So Ron says uh, Yelich could hit 400, and that that's a great point. I could. He's a definitely a batting average kind of guy. Yeah, that dude's a stud. Altuve's on base might be over 400, but probably not for the reasons he'd like. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, I love it, he will he will get bean quite a bit, perhaps. Yeah. Now, you know what the Astros the Astros are going to benefit from this. You know, no st- no uh, fans in the stands. The Astros aren't oh, going to get it. Oh, that is something that I haven't even have. thought about. The Astros, they're not going to get it anywhere as bad as they should have. And you want to know something else? Because every game is worth three times what a normal game is worth, you're not going to see the opposing team mm. beating, the, beating the Astros too much either now, now that I think about it. Because you, you can't afford to – I mean, every mm. inning is going to – be so valuable every run every base runner it's just going to be that much more intensified i think every team will take one shot at during each series well yeah maybe I, but i don't i don't one know one man shot I, I think you're wrong eric i i actually think you're wrong but we'll see i mean we'll, we we got to see what what happens um and, and yeah, I don't know, man. I, I whatever's coming to them is not going to be as bad as it would have been if we were under a regular yeah. season. Because I mean, that they, we can all they were heckling. <laughs> I couldn't believe I was seeing like the um, 
Astros coaches in spring training getting upset with fans, and it's like you, you can't blame them, guy. You know, <laughs> you des- you guys deserve it. You guys deserve the heckling. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, personally, I think at this point, in a, in some ways, they just need to move on from it. Like, okay, it happened. Like, there are other teams doing it too. Like, the Yankees have been called out for doing it. Um, yeah, whatever happened with that? I don't know. Got brushed under the rug a little bit with all the other stuff. Yeah, going. they were supposed to open up a sealed letter, and then I never, I didn't hear anything about it. Yeah, yeah I heard Boston too is kind of. Uh... Uh, well, they were implementing the Boston as well, so yeah, I don't know. Mm-hmm. So, any other comments, Taters? Uh, let's see here. Got this one, Vintage Oddball Oh, uh, Rick, what's up, Rick? Uh, hey, Rick. Somebody, somebody will hit 400. Hitters will have the advantage at the beginning. And, and and absolutely, that you, you always see the high batting average uh, sustained sometimes for a month or two, a guy hitting 400 every season. So I agree with that. Um, Maybe Mookie? Ooh, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I can see Mookie Betts hitting 400. I can see Loriano or McNeil. I mean, I, I like Loriano, but I don't see him hitting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if Loriano's a 400 hitter. I yeah, McNeil, that's right. I forgot about him. He was a rookie with the Mets last year, and he had a really good start. Yeah. That's a good, that's a good call. I don't call. get too excited about big rookie seasons anymore because I kind of feel like now the next year comes in, the league has adjusted to them a little bit. They have more information. Oh, sophomore slump. Yeah. Yeah, that happens to almost every good ball player or uh, every great rookie season. There's going to be a – there's only one player I could think of that didn't have the sophomore slump. Albert Pools. Yep. <laughs> He's I mean that that guy, that's why they call him the machine. He he never didn't have oh, the yeah. sophomore, the junior, or the senior slump. Well I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean he was like his first I mean that guy is amazing. Technically first, Jose what, Canseco season? didn't have a sophomore slump. Who's that? Jose Canseco. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, uh, very fun. Fun. Well Canseco Canseco no. He didn't. Barry Bonds didn't put superstar numbers up until 1990. Like between 86 and 89, he was he was good, but 90 is when he blossomed into the superstar yeah. that became was that his first the MVP? goat. Yeah, 90, and then 91, and then he won in 93, and he should have won in 92, but that's the year Terry Pendleton. Uh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Hear, the year Terry Pendleton won. Ken Griffey Jr. didn't really have a sophomore slump, did he? Well, he didn't have a great rookie season. He didn't have a horrible rookie season, but he didn't have like a. He he was just he was okay as rookie season, yeah. you know. So that I mean, when you have a a rookie season like Griffey's rookie season, you you can't really have a sophomore slump. Yeah. I mean, all you right. have to do is play than his rookie year, which wasn't that hard. Yeah. I mean, if you go back and look at the back of a Griffey Jr. card, you, a lot of people might be surprised. Um, um, year, right, or something like that. Yeah, I mean, he wasn't, he wasn't, he wasn't unbelievable his rookie year. Typically, a sophomore yeah, slump but... would be like an MVP type campaign, or breaking rookie records, or being in the All Star game, or being in the running for MVP, or Rookie of the Year type player that. The following season, you know, doesn't do too well. I saw – I'll tell you what, Griffey sure was popular. I saw him in um, the spring, in spring training of 1990, and it, he, he was like – whenever he was signing autographs, it was just chaos. I mean, people yeah. were – I mean, running over each other, pushing, shoving. I mean, I didn't even, I didn't even bother trying to get his autograph because – <laughs> well, here's the thing. I couldn't deal with that. Griffey's rookie season, he was 18. So, you you know, I mean, the, uh, you don't expect him to put up MVP-type numbers as a rookie either. Yeah. He was still developing. I mean, that's, you know, so, I mean, people knew he was yeah. going to be good. So, his rookie yeah. season didn't really – that's not why he was – I mean, he was always popular. Always yeah. popular. 
even though his rookie season wasn't spectacular. Well said, Nate. <laughs> Very true. Hey, you guys uh, want to? You guys want to see this insane auction I witnessed earlier? Okay. It has Let's a lot. It. This has something to do with what Nate and I were talking about earlier. That's an auction. Wow. Yeah. What so it, is that a Jim <laughs> Ten Tiffany or something? Yep. Is that so, a PWCC auction or something? It's exactly. So yeah, I was watching this huh? just because I was I was curious to see what it was going to sell for. I saw Jim in ten. Now last year, one sold for thirty two hundred something like that, and I thought that was insane. So uh, you know, a year ago, so twelve thousand. Man, that one that blew my mind right there. I, well, I wonder if that's a record that's price up. for any yeah, McGuire you know, card. That I would yes. Yes, Nate. Because it so they were not when, selling that high in '98. That's for sure. They weren't selling that I'm that about, high. I'm I'm talking about in the history of auctions on eBay. Is that the most anyone's ever paid for any Maguire card ever? I bet you that card is the most yeah, that anybody's so. paid for any Maguire yeah. card ever. And the reason why I think that is because the '96 Select Certified Gold. Mirror Gold Barry Bonds sold for ten thousand two hundred dollars on eBay. And yeah, we know the buyer didn't me and, sell me that. Me and a bunch time. of friends looked back to see what the highest single auction ending listing for Barry Bonds on eBay was, and that was it. And that's ten thousand two hundred. Yeah. So I bet you that McGuire is the most anyone's um, ever paid for a McGuire card. I, I and that's sure. a lot of money, twelve thousand a lot. But Maybe I, I can see why you were watching that there. auction, man. I mean, if I, time I was just curious, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's crazy to see what the price difference is. Well, I was going to get out my nine, but just to, you know, what's the, the price difference between a nine and a 10 is now I will say that population on the 85 Tiffany is probably Jim meant 10 is probably really low. I don't know what it is, but. Yeah, that, that set was, is notoriously off center. That McGuire is just has a lot of centering yeah. issues. Yes, uh, I, yeah, that Tiffany. But, but yeah, that that edge issues also. Yeah, like some of those. Well, thanks for issues. sharing that with us. Uh, that was yeah, cool. it was <laughs> yeah. blew my mind. That's for sure. Yeah. So, any other comments? I know I keep asking for comments. But <laughs> <laughs> I just can't see them. So. Uh, there you go. All right. And he didn't hit hurt. 30. You know what? I honestly didn't know that Eric did that in 129 games. Wow. Yeah, Eric Davis definitely would have uh, been a 40-40 oh, guy. Yeah, he was. That guy was a I, straight I, stud, man. Yeah, I knew that I knew the numbers he put up. I didn't know that he did that in only 129 games. But that was Eric's problem throughout his career. He was always hurt. Yeah, he went from uh, Cincinnati to the to L.A. and uh, that kind of continued. I remember over he, there. he wrapped his career up as a member of the San Francisco Giants. I vaguely remember that. <laughs> yeah, that was cool, man. When, I always liked Eric Davis when. Uh, uh, well, when, when the late 90s, early 2000s? Yeah, I think it was like 2001 or two, somewhere in yeah. there. Yeah, he had a pretty good career, about a 16-year career. Uh, he was That's definitely on career. track to be a Hall of Famer early on, but of course... Talent-wise, yeah. Fell, yeah, of course he fell short, but... Yeah, Eric Davis was... I remember back in like the um, 80s, early 90s, the 85 Eric Davis rookie cards were one of the hottest cards mm -hmm. in the hobby. And it's probably because of that season where he hit 37 homers and 50 oh, yeah. stolen bases. Mm -hmm. But I remember like his 85 tops back in like 90, 89, 90 was selling for what, 30 bucks. And the Donruss and the Fleer were selling for even more. Back then, Donruss and Fleer had a premium price over the tops for some reason. Probably because tops, they just printed more cards. They were they were they easier were harder to find. To find. I, they were harder to find. Yeah. I didn't 
I don't think I had found Donruss for sale until 88. I had seen a little bit of 87 Donruss, but 86 and beyond, I never saw it for sale anywhere as a kid. I only saw it yeah, for insane, sale man. after 1990 in card shops. Yeah. But I never saw it for sale like at the grocery store or gas station yeah, that's what I'm saying. Or, or Walgreens or wherever. Never, 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 ever. It was only but, tops. You could find tops but, anywhere. So, anywhere. Gas stations. Remember that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, mean, well, I remember seeing 86 Fleer. I remember 86 Fleer, 84 really? Fleer. 84 and 86 Fleer, I remember seeing. And 87 Donruss. But other than that, it was all tops. And Tops. then around Remember 1988, that. 89, you would see those sealed 80s, you know, uh, 80s uh, Fleer and Donruss at the card shop. But, yeah, you, you couldn't go to 7-Eleven and get that stuff. <laughs> the, the, the liquor store down the street in El Cerrito, remember? Down at the bottom yeah. of the hill? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to be yeah. fair, though, like 86, 87, 88, 89. Well, maybe some wouldn't agree about 89, but def definitely 87. 88, 89 Fleer were more attractive than Tops in those years as far as like the way the card looked, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, well, Don Russ looked better than Tops, so that might be kind of part of it. As far as uh, back, well, in like 86, Don Russ definitely had the best design in 86 out of all the three companies, and in 84, I think Tops had the best design, followed by Don Russ and then Fleer. And I like all I, 84, all had great looking cards. But in 85, I do not like 85 Fleer. It's it's kind of not the best it's looking like design. The gray order. Yeah. 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 That's why I, I didn't like 85. 85 <laughs> Tops just had such poor production. I mean, those cards are so tough to find in good shape, man. I mean, they all had. I don't know what it was about, like, 78 tops and 85 tops. Both those years, <laughs> right out of the pack, man, those cards were just rough. But, um, yeah, I don't that's know why I, I got got into that. But <laughs> I'm just kind of reflecting on some of the that's years of I'm cards. I'm so lucky about the copy that my mom picked up of this rookie in 88. Oh, man. Yeah, <laughs> like, you love uh, that card, you know, huh? Oh, heck yeah, man. I mean... Like it's pretty, pretty good shape, you know. Same. Yeah, that is a nice looking card. Uh, and I, you know, I don't ever remember seeing '87 Fleer ever as a kid. Ever, people ever. Were buying until, it until, until you find that stuff easier now than you could back in '87. <laughs> right. You know, and it's twenty. What? No, thirty-three years later. Not twenty-three. Thirty-three years later. Yeah. <laughs> crazy well, man people say it like that it's true year, <laughs> the year will clark had his rookie card right in, in you you, you want to know it's great about the 87 um, Fleer will clark and barry bonds rookie cards is if you ever see a box break 87 Fleer, anytime you see the will clark will show up first and then the barry bonds is always in the same pack are you serious Dead serious. I mean, the correlation was like it was like the packs were the same in '87 Fleer, but you always get Will Clark. If you see Will Clark in the pack, you're gonna get Barry Bonds. I wonder if time. it's what I was telling you about the same thing as the '89 Fleer. Remember, yeah, I told probably. you probably yeah, that the factory the they, set, the way it was, the the number the. The way they were placed in there, the out of you would order. See the factory set is how the, the, the cello packs were, yeah. I don't know yeah. if 80, I, mean, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it was the same correlation in the factory sets. I think the way that the machine kind of I don't know. I didn't, I didn't open any 87 Fleer, so. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I didn't open Fleer until 89. I didn't open Fleer until 88. At yeah, all. no, I. And I love 88. 88. That, that set is 88 nostalgic is great as hell. From, yeah, I love that that candy cane border, right? Who coined the, yeah. the candy cane border? I forget who said that. And then when they get them signed in blue ink, those cards look great. Oh, yeah, they are beautiful, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah. mind picking up a Bonds with uh, blue ink or 
I don't know. That one actually might look really nice in black ink with that candy cane border with the colors you, and then the, the pirates uniform with the black ink. You actually don't want to do black. You don't want to do black ink because over time it actually starts to yellow. Maybe. Uh, I guess the, the, the ink oh, starts no, to like oxidize, a, huh? Yeah, a big a guy that's uh, very into TTMs and in-person autographs told me that because I used to get black yeah. ink all the time. Yeah. And then well, I guess. That. <laughs> yeah, it probably depends on like the stock of the the autograph and what type of printing they use and how that print that how that ink, the printing ink interacts with the pen ink. But yeah, well, I, I ever, suppose I do tend to turn blue. Majority of the black will yellow, but if you look at a majority of the autographs you see, the um like certified autographs is blue ink. You see red. Yeah, I guess the blue ink holds up better, huh? Yeah. Interesting. Because, so. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, that's like, you know, that Ricky Henderson in person autograph? I got that in black. And, um, might have. No, it wasn't that card. No, he told me later. But I didn't know that back then, or I would have gotten it in blue. I should pull it out. <laughs> I guess so. It. I got that yeah, in 90 color. It is. So I, should, I should pull it out and see if it's, uh, <laughs> if it's starting to yellow yet. Oh, hmm. interesting. I mean, I guess if it starts to yellow, you know it was done in an ink pen and not just, like, stamped on there, right? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Sure, Eric. <laughs> yeah, I'm throwing it out there. <laughs> so, guys, I'm, re I'm ready to hop off now unless there's uh, one, one or two more things you guys want to chat about, but... No, we've already been on an hour and a half. I think we. Yeah. Close. All right. Good, right on. Good show. We showed off some yeah. great cards. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, thank you everybody for hopping on. Everybody that commented and participated in the, the, the uh, conversation. Thank you very much. And I just feel like showing off one more card because this card is might be the most beautiful refractor Barry Bonds of all time. I don't know. It's debatable, <laughs> that's for sure. Ah, interesting. <laughs> well, we all got something shiny to show off. So, <laughs> thanks for Eric tuning in, off, tuning in, fine. everybody. Thanks for watching, everyone. And as always, happy, happy collecting. Collecting. <laughs> collecting. <laughs>